Okay, so this is Maggie. Maggie is very subdued right now. Now, Maggie kept on jumping up on the couch here, and I basically, because she was so excited, I stopped her from jumping up, I, or I didn't stop her, I asked her to get down. She tried to get back up two or three times, but I was consistent, and I'm not overdoing it, or you're doing it in an angry way, just you're not, not allowed, period. Because dogs probe to determine where boundaries and limits are, if we don't have a lot of rules, we don't spend much time correcting them. And if we don't spend much time correcting them, they kind of start going a little bit further each time. It's kind of like the people who win the lottery. You know, their lives usually go down the drain because they don't have a job anymore. They don't have much structure in their life. They can do pretty much anything they want and they usually overindulge. And I'm guessing a big part of Maggie's issues are her overindulging in this excitement. Mm -hmm. um, I don't show Guardian's faces in my videos, but I will narrate that the Guardian, like when I, because the cat came over here a minute ago, and she was, I was like, is this normal? Is it just when the cat's excited? She goes, no, she's probably not doing this because you're here. Um, and the guardian kind of gave me an expression like, wow. Um, so once we start kind of tempering down and saying, look, these are what the boundaries and limits are, then dogs kind of reel themselves in a little bit, which is probably why we have this different, much different result of her relaxing. Normally when you have people here, she's jumping up on them, all boisterous, running around, trying to show off. And you've got little kids, little kids like to show off for visitors too. And so uh, if we allow it to go on, uh, interesting thing for dogs is if they're doing something and we don't disagree with them, they think we are cool with what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So if we don't disagree with them right away, <coughs> they don't understand why we're disagreeing. Um, I usually tell my clients you have a window of about three seconds. So if, let's say that Maggie was barking and she barked, 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 and you read somewhere, just ignore it and it'll go away. Well, she keeps on barking and barking and barking. And finally, your tolerance level gets so high you can't take it anymore. You explode at her and you're like, Maggie, shut up. Maggie's like, what is she upset about? Clearly, it's not barking. Because I've been barking for five minutes and she hasn't said anything. Mm -hmm. uh, so what could it be? Well, uh, if we, you have a window of about three to five seconds. I'm going to get up so we can just have some good dog footage for this video. But if you don't correct what the dog's doing within three seconds, they don't really understand what it is you're mm -hmm. disagreeing with. So if the dog is barking and we don't disagree right from the get-go, they're going to get confused. And a lot of people inadvertently confuse the dog or send it the wrong message because they're really late in their timing. And we do it because we're trying to be nice. You know, we oh, it's okay. I'll just, I'll be patient. I'll be patient. You actually do the dog a disservice. So in the future, anytime that Maggie's doing something you don't want, I want you to disagree with her immediately. Um, and you'll find that you're gonna need to disagree with her less and less strenuously and less and less often. And eventually she understands every time I do this particular activity, she disagrees with me. She doesn't want me to do that. So uh, it's just, it's one of those things where like it's human psychology and dog psychology diverging because for us that would be kind of rude to be so, you know, persnickety and pointing out everything you don't like about somebody. But because we can communicate verbally, it's, you know, we can communicate in different ways. For dogs, we have to disagree right away. About disagreeing. I'm gonna cover that okay, off camera. When she's jumping on me when I walk in. I, sure. I tell her down. You know, I'll push her off if she jumps up. Well, if you push a dog, the only well, times dogs really push kind of each like other. The way you yeah. Do it when you but if you it. push a dog with your arms, the only times dogs really push each other in that sort of way, although they don't have arms, uh, is uh, when they're about to hump or play. So if you push the dog away with your arm, you're saying leave me alone. But what the dog hears is come back and push me harder. So with the little shin shrug that we do, that's a little bit different because you're catching, a lot of times you're catching the dog while it's in the air. Sometimes they, fall, they knock over. I'm not saying you want to abuse or kick your dogs, but if they crash, they're going to be a little bit more cautious the next time they do it. So we don't want to knock them down, but your timing also has to be really good. If your timing is right, precise the first time and the intensity is right, then they get the message. But if you're too soft or too late, a lot of times they won't get it. Now, don't take this as me saying that you need to abuse your dogs or Absolutely. anything like that. Well, just for people yeah. watching at home. On the okay. internet, people get a little bit, you know, oh, you said you should, you should knock the dog down. I'm definitely not saying that, but we want to make sure that we're, that we're uh, using the right intensity and right timing. There we go. Good girl. All right, we'll talk about why saying good girl isn't a good thing yeah. here in a minute. Different trainer told me differently. <laughs>